Good morning and welcome to United Methodist Church at Berlin for our online service. We did have a COVID case tested positive among our congregation this week, so we are meeting virtually and we hope to be back in church next Sunday with Darlene Soto from the Upper New York Conference as our speaker. Let us be in a spirit of prayer. Holy God, you offer such goodness to us. You give us so much, blessing us with resources that many go without. Despite your goodness, humanity has collectively responded selfishly, taking what we can, using it for our own gain and not thinking about the consequences. Forgive us, Lord, for producing rotten fruit when you've given us everything we need so that all people can thrive. May we learn to be more like you, bringing forth goodness and care so that good fruit may come to the world. Amen. And I'll do both parts of the call to worship this morning. We cry out and we say, restore us, O God. We petition, God, may your face shine on us. We lift our voices. We turn toward you, O God, and call your name. Amen. Our scripture readings today are from Isaiah, Luke, and Hebrews. From Isaiah, the fifth chapter, the verses one through five. Let me sing for my beloved my love song concerning his vineyard. My beloved has a vineyard on a very fertile hill. He dug it and cleared it of all the stones, planted it with the choice vines. He built a watchtower in the midst of it and hewed it out a wine vat in it. He expected it to yield grapes, but it yielded wild grapes. And now inhabitants of Jerusalem and people of Judah Judge between me and my vineyard. What more was there to do for my vineyard that I have not done? When I expected to yield grapes, why did it yield wild grapes? And now I will tell you what I will do to my vineyard. I will remove its hedge and it will be devoured. I will break down the walls and it will be trampled on. I will make it a waste. It shall not be pruned or hoed and it shall be overgrown with briars and thorns. I will also command the clouds that they rain no more rain upon it. For the vineyard of the Lord of hosts is the house of Israel, and the people of Judah are his pleasant planting. He expected justice, and he saw bloodshed, righteousness, but heard a cry. Our gospel reading from the book of Luke today comes from the 12th chapter, verses 49 to 56. I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism which, with which to be baptized and what stress I'm under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five and 1,000 will be divided. Three against two and two against three. They will be divided father against son and son against father and mother against daughter and mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, where you see a rising cloud in the West, you immediately say it's going to rain. And so it happens. And when you see to the South, the wind blowing, you say, there'll be scorching heat. And it happens. You hypocrites. You know how to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky, but why do you not know how to interpret present time? And our third reading is from the book of Hebrews, the 11th chapter. And I'm just going to read to you verses 11 chapter 11, 39 through 12, 2. All those, though they were commanded by their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that has been set before us looking to Jesus, the pioneer, the perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy 
that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. So our message today comes from the scripture, and the scripture is a little bit troublesome with Israel saw itself as a vineyard. Later, the church began to see itself as a new vineyard, and the vineyard is tagged for destruction. It's hard to find a positive spin to all of this, but a key verse is the third verse, my people judge between me and my vineyard. We love our churches. We expend a lot of effort to maintain the buildings and to fill them with ministries and events and fellowship and service. We spend a lot of time there. We love our church and we should. Isaiah is asking us, however, if we sometimes lose perspective when it comes to church, God's vineyard. For what is church for? Supporting the church is not a supposed, it's not supposed to be an end in itself. Our church mission statement is to make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Not disciples of the church, not for the transformation of the church. The church is a means, not the end of what we do. We need to move beyond the building to focus on being the presence of God at work and in the world. The United Methodist Church at Berlin has made the following mission statement and vision statement. Our mission, our church provides a listening presence for God's leadership in our lives, genuine connection and a love of family outreach to all within the beyond and beyond our doors through worship, good food, music, and volunteering for service to others. Hmm, that's our mission. Now our vision for the future, we aspire to uh, find inspiration, purpose, and spirituality by joining together as God's hands, heart, and voice in our community, increasing our reach without hesitation, attracting, welcoming, and embracing more people and serving those in need. That's our future we aspire to. Now our values, the beliefs that our base behaviors are based on, faith, teamwork, trust, integrity, and our relationships provide the grant, common ground that is more important than our individual differences. Hmm, wild grapes, according to Isaiah, meant people that of God that, that weren't following the leadership but their own will and their own conscience. God wants us to be cultivated grapes, guided by the word, tended by the spirit, wherever we work or live. While we're thankful for the church building and for the beauty and utility of all these structures, it's the people and how they live in the world that are the church at work. It was the people of this church that worked long and hard to shake out the deepest feelings of the congregation and try to put it into words. It was with God's guidance that our path became more clear. Dr. Smalls, the pastor of Hope United Methodist Church in Southfield, Michigan, speaks in his preaching notes and he said, vineyards are aesthetically beautiful places. They have beautiful greenery and well manicured lawns and rows of grapevines. They're exquisite and breathtaking. The rolling hills are marvelous to see. In biblical days, a vineyard was quite a prized possession. They were well taken care of. It actually took a great deal of time to take care of them. This tending to the vineyard was also orchestrated for one thing, grapes. Fresh, whole, round, perfect grapes. Workers in the vineyard were meticulous and detailed in their care. God speaks of wild grapes, though. Though there's no excuse for wild grapes. They've been watered. They've been given shade so as not to rot or be parched in the sun. They've been given the best environment for growth. Doesn't that sound like a parody of our lives? We've been tended and nurtured and given an environment to worship, learned the commandments, and now are we grapes gone wild? This would not be the last time that God was disappointed by fruit. You recall that Jesus, while on a journey, walked up to a fig tree that looked like it was ready for the picking, but it wasn't. Jesus seemed angry at the tree for false advertising. 
The tree was presenting an appearance that didn't match its reality. This too was a lesson. Today our vineyards are buildings. We deck them out to attract crowds with fancy coffee bars and light shows. But when, while we do this, the world is struggling with inflation and healthcare issues and crime. So how can there be so many vineyards in our midst? Could it be that they're all producing wild grapes? The formula for getting all of this corrected remains repentance. The lack of repentance will prompt God to remove the workers in the vineyard, and then the vineyards will go awry. This, of course, means that there'll be scorching heat and weather and lack of nourishment and great suffering. Now, there's nothing wrong with great vineyards, but that is only a little bit of what it's meant to be people connected to God. How is God calling us to address grapes gone wild in our lives? Be mindful, Jesus did this in his opening homily in Nazareth after reading from this very book, Isaiah. Once the scroll was up, he began to announce that the day was at hand when God would finally get what he wanted for those who were oppressed. He would be the one to complete it. This sermon may not make you happy, but it almost got Jesus killed. But nevertheless, it was from this kind of a sermon that Jesus launched his ministry. He launched it from the margins. So are we prophets on the margin? Are we ready to be those nurtured and cultured grapes, not wild grapes? Are we ready to follow the word of God, whether it be in this building, whether it be in the community, whether it be in the world? Let us be those, those good grapes, those cultivated grapes that God is looking for. Let us pray. God who listens, we approach you today with a lot of questions. Bad things happen far too often and we can't understand why. God, why does it feel more and more like people face death, unemployment, injustice, and sickness every day? Why do tragedies occur, leaving us at a loss for words? Families are torn apart, becoming foes to those who were friends. Humanity is facing more global distress than we can navigate. Our news feeds are overwhelmed with articles about natural disasters and fire and war. And the list goes on and on. And why do these things happen, God? We try to do the right thing, yet bad things still happen. We try to nurture the seeds you've planted, hoping for an abundant harvest. Yet the harvest seems bleak. Lord, guide us. Show us what it is that we are supposed to be doing in this world to keep the world on a more straight and narrow path. Lord, we know that we have you. We know that our, our ultimate goal is to be with you in your kingdom. But Lord, we pray that you might make it a little easier for us to live here on this earth. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And again, ladies and gentlemen, today's message is brief. And we will be back in person service next week. If you are of a mind to make an offering to the United Methodist Church at Berlin, you can do it through Tithely online. You can do it by mailing your offering to Box 225 in Berlin. Or you can drop it in the drop box on the back door of the church. Thank you very much for being with us today. Have a blessed week. And let me close by saying, may God go with you each and every place you go this week. And may he shine his light upon you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>